gets used to it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, can I see you now, please? The room is open. Yeah. I have a second. I'll do it in the front Oh, inshallah. So, may I speak in the Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Fine. I'm great. Can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Okay. What about uh, Najwa? Where is she? Mm, I don't know. It's just, I sit. It's quite weird. I before I tried, but. Yes, before you tried to log in, but the room was still closed, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So let's send the reminder to Najwa. Forgive me, please, but I have to send a reminder for each one of you. Pardon me, I cannot understand. No, I'm just telling you that I have to send a reminder to Najwa. No, I am Dr. Shah. Oh, sorry, to, uh, pardon me, not to Najwa, to uh, Rushi. Oh, pardon me, yeah. sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, I know that you're Dr. Shah. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know Najwa. <laughs> oh, so sorry, sorry, sorry. The mistake was in her name, not yours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's wait until she comes. Until she comes, I just need to discuss something with you. Dr. Shah, uh, can I ask you a question? Are you using any extra resources these days for studying, Dr. Shah? No extra resources I didn't use uh, because uh, our schedule is very busy. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying my best. Yes. But uh, before I read too much. You used to read too much. I, I, I used to read too uh, uh, there was a, uh, the, uh, I think there is a, a one uh, IELTS uh, free website. Yes. Uh, so, what is it called? Uh, I, I'll remember IELTS free practice, I think. All right. From so that, I, I downloaded the reading, writing material, even um, listening. So I did, uh, I think it has books, some more than 10 to 15 books, MOOC, test and uh, Cambridge and these books. So I did almost all of them. Mash but for my previous exam. For your previous exam. But I yeah. wonder how did they give you 6.5 in the speaking? You know, your mistakes are very, very slight mistakes. They're so trivial mistakes that can barely ta be taken into consideration. If I were in any of the examiner's shoes, they would never give you 6.5. And um, maybe I, uh, I applied already this time for, yes. uh, uh, I changed my center uh, for Jeddah Center, I applied. I'll go right. for exam, also I will perform Umrah. Inshallah. And then I'll come back. Uh, let's see, maybe that day was not my good day. Yeah, <laughs> maybe time. it wasn't your good day. Or maybe I have other reasons as well. I wonder whether you are one of those who get easily nervous and a little bit irritated while being in a test situation. Are you one of them? 
No, I don't think so because uh, in medical I appeared in lot of exam. Yes. So, so you're used uh, to used to this situation and we are, I work under pressure. This is usual for us. Very no. usual. Yeah. But uh, I'm weak in writing. I know that. Um, yes, but what I was your score? Get, uh, about six. What six, was your score six, in the speaking, Dr. Chef? Speaking, my score was 6.5. This is too I needed, for your level. Yeah, I needed uh, seven. Yes, the point is that your um, writing, is uh, your, your, uh, your speaking skills are way higher than a band score 6.5. And there must be a reason for this. If your level was the same as now, um, when did you take your last IELTS test? Um, I think four to five months back. Five uh, months it, back. Was, uh, it was, it was uh, uh, 20, uh, July. Okay, did you have enough knowledge about the test before or when you took the test or? Uh, you just took it blindly without any prior knowledge. No, ma'am. First time I appeared, uh, the score was almost same. Oh. I got. Yes. Then second time, second time I did a lot of work. Almost ten to fifteen books. I told you I finished everything. Marshall. Uh, writing every book had uh, six, seven uh, reading, writing, and all, all six, seven tests every book had. Oh so, uh, I mean, I think I have done uh, practice almost uh, 10 to 15, 15 multiply seven tests or six tests. Oh, okay. So, uh, it's a lot of uh, almost 190 tests, full, complete. Then, yes. uh, as I told you before, that my wife is an uh, English master and she is teaching in the in Ajran University and preparatory air for girls. Okay. So, uh, we did practice for speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, she was examiner at that time, before my exam, okay. and uh, I was the student. So, uh, we uh, uh, did a lot of practice for that. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe I had, uh, this was my luck. Okay. Or maybe yes. I had uh, done some mistake which I didn't notice at that time. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Or maybe the topic. You were not very much familiar with the topic that uh, you were asked about. The second time, uh, madam, I got a topic that was uh, I, I that I already prepared up to some extent. Seriously? And, yeah, and even even in reading passage. I read too much uh, reading passage, as I told you. Yeah. Uh, when I sit there in uh, for reading, I saw I did that one week, one week before. Okay. The two passages were same to same, copy paste, and only one passage was very difficult that they give us. Uh, I don't know from where, but it was too much difficult. Oh. So, yeah, even in that, uh, I got only 6.5. It see. was okay. Yeah. Uh, no, 7. Sorry, 7. I got 7. 7 is not bad. Yeah, and uh, speaking was also 7. Speaking, uh, no, sorry, this listening. Listening, uh, I'm good in listening because I did a lot of practice. So, uh, I got 7 band in uh, listening. Okay. But, uh, By the way, I'm good at... I'm good at listening, not in. Oh, sorry. I'm good at listening. I, I did a good job there. Okay. But I got uh, almost uh, seven, yes. Seven, it was my band. Okay. But I'm now worried about writing. Uh, this thing, me and my wife, we were discuss, discuss, discussing yesterday that uh, I'll ask Madam to help me also in writing once I finish with this uh, speaking. Um, I was about to tell you that for the writing, I'm going to start a very uh, near academic course. Uh, I was about mm -hmm. to tell both of you so, by the way, because uh, I already have two test takers uh, who, mm -hmm. uh, who have already applied for this course. But unfortunately, I never start before I have at least four members for each course. 
Uh, by the way, your, your speaking course is exceptional. It never happened that I accept only two members for a whole, uh, uh, for a whole course. It never happened. Okay. Yeah, so your course is one of a kind, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys okay. would like to apply for the academic writing, you're very much welcome. I'll send you the uh, application link in which you can enroll yourself. All right. So uh, after this one or... Uh... Along with this? Uh, most probably, no, it will be along with it. Along with it, Yani, Friday and another day. Friday and, uh, and the same timing? Uh, Friday, same timing, but um, uh, the other day, uh, I don't think so. It will be, most probably, it will be Saturday morning. Mm, Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday you're off, right? Uh, most of the Saturdays, I'm off. Most of the Saturdays, yes. And uh, by the way, you will have so many advantages if you would like to join this course. Among these advantages or privileges is that you will get at least four writing topics for each uh, writing section. Like section one, yeah. four types or four topics, and section two, four topics. And uh, uh, how, uh, how we, will, uh, we will send you uh, our writing? Yes, definitely. You will send me your writing. But I don't want to waste the speaking course time, please. Okay, let's discuss this later. If you'd like to discuss the writing okay. course with me later, uh, not okay. waste our uh, dear Rushi's time. Hello, Rushi. How, how are you? Okay. Fine, alhamdulillah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, good. Rushi, I'm afraid that uh, I was not done with, your, with assessing your speaking uh, presentations before this time, before our uh, session's time. But honestly speaking, I've listened to it, okay? To both presentations. And I have some comments, uh, but allow me please to send them to you just right after I finish this course, inshallah, this, this session, inshallah, okay? Okay, okay my dear. As soon as we finish, all right? All right, okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, today okay. we are going to start our Commas lesson, commas, all right? And I believe that this lesson is really important in both the speaking and the writing as well. All right, why is it important, the commas lesson? Actually, it's too important because it affects your fluency while speaking. Most of the people do not find the right words in order to um, you know, put words in series or put a group of words together or uh, if you need to um, uh, add some coordinate adjectives and so on. We will understand all what I say now when I share my screen and I start my lesson, okay? Bismillah. Here we go. Talking about the commas, here is the comma and we know that there is a big difference between a comma and an apostrophe, right? Yes? yes, there is a difference between the comma and the apostrophe. Okay. I think we both know it. Here, the here is a comma, which is put here. The apostrophe is put after, yes, above the it's, word. It's, it's, up. Yeah. it's usually put above the word. Yes, thank you very much. All right, so let's see what uh, or when do we use the comma. Mm -hmm. Yes? All right, comma rule number one, the commas in series. Series means a group of words. We use the commas to separate items in series. A series is a list of three or more items, the last two of which are joined by and, or, or nor. How's that? Like I like here, series of single words like cups, jars, and plates, saw, screamed, and cried running, jumping, and di diving, and swimming. These are four items. If you look here, these, however these are single words, they belong to different parts of speech, right? What part of speech is the first example here? Cups, jars, and plates, what parts of speech are they? Are they pronouns or nouns or verbs? Nouns, here. They're nouns, very good. What about the second one, Sha? Saw, screamed, and cried. Saw, screamed, and cried. cried. Mm. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. All right. 
What parts of speech are these? Are they noun, verbs, or pronouns? Uh, these are verbs. These are verbs, very good. Running, jumping, diving, and swimming, these are verbs as well. But if you notice, these are words that have the same, uh, uh, the, the same sequence. They belong to the same part of speech, okay? Okay. But please be careful. While using and, or, or nor here, you cannot put different groups of words you cannot put different group of, groups of words. Like for example, you can't say cups, jars, and my dishes, for example, or Absolutely. and swimming. Can you do that? No. Definitely not. They have to belong to the same group of words or to the same part of speech. Series of phrases or clauses. So these are series of single words. Series of clauses or phrases, how's that? Like a group of words that are joined together. Cups of sugar, jars of honey, plates of spaghetti. Saw the mugging, screamed loudly, and cried about it. Running around the track, jumping over hurdles, diving off the board, or swimming across the pool. Whom you see, where you go, or what you do. You got it now? Yes. So here we're joining groups of words. Dr. Shea, please read the second part. Any of these can put into sentence form. Read. Please put the cups, jars, and plates into the cabinet. The young girl saw the mugging, screamed loudly, and cried about it for days afterwards. Afterward, I really don't care whom you see, where you go, and what you do. Or what you do. Uh, Dr. Shah, uh, uh, um, are you wearing uh, eyeglasses? Yeah, yeah. You're wearing your eyeglasses now? Yes. Why do I feel like there is difficulty while reading the words? Yeah, I have some uh, uh, problem in my eyes uh, since last month. So uh, now I'm uh, new with my glasses. Okay, these are new ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Just okay. I started uh, two, three days before or five days before. Oh, that's why. All right. Okay. Okay. May Allah grant you the blessing of a very, very good eyesight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So the, the important things to remember about using commas in series are these. Number one, series includes three or more items of the same type, as we said, words or groups of words. The series is connected by and, or, or nor before the last item. Do you understand this? So for example, you can say, you can uh, enjoy the pool, play tennis, or watch TV, okay? Yeah. Okay. In the same sentence, I can say, you can enjoy playing tennis, watching TV, or uh, swimming in the pool or and swimming in the pool all right you cannot do so 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 nor so 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 all right a comma separates items and be careful please to this point a comma separates items in the series including the final item preceded by and or or no so if you notice here how many verbs are related or connected to each other or how many phrases in this sentence, please, where my cursor is moving? Three. These are three. Whom you yeah. see, comma, Great. where you go, and before the last one we put or, what you do. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here, comma, you search, and I want you please to answer questions one to four only in your copybook, then send the screenshot to me, just right now. We are going to retype the sentence again. Mm -hmm. the have to, but read the directions first. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. You can do it orally if you'd like to. I don't want to waste a lot of time today. Orally? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 
Rewrite the below sentence on the given line, placing commas where commas are needed. If a sentence needs no yeah. comma, write correct in the next, in the text sentence. Uh, the in English professor adjusted her glasses, shuff, uh, comma, shuffled her notes, and began her lecture. There's something missing. Uh, the comma be, uh, before end. Thank you very much. The comma before and, before the joining before words and or or nor, you have to put a comma here too. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. We have to put even a comma before and. Yes, a comma before and as well. Yes. However, okay. let me tell you the truth. Okay. The British people do not pay big attention to uh, the comma before and. Yet, grammatically, yeah. we have to put it. Grammatically, we have to put it. And the IELTS examiners really care about putting the commas before uh, and as a joining word. Okay? Every, every time. Every time, yes. Especially if this is a connecting word, if it's connecting words, okay. phrases, or sentences. Thank you very much. Number two, Rushi, a jogger. As a jogger ran down the alley and onto my lawn uh, this morning. I think no need for comments here. No need. Okay. A jogger ran down the alley and onto my okay. lawn this morning. This morning. Why? Why? Yes, why there's no need to the comma. Because there is no series of... Uh, no series uh, of... This new series of uh, nouns, uh, even uh, verbs or actions. Okay, what is and joining? I have to put come up before and, just one. Okay, do you think? Um, what I extracted uh, just now, <laughs> that I am um, unique <laughs> to put comma. <laughs> because a series of group of words, uh, relative or clauses, uh, some uh, words of noun or verbs, oh. and so much. <laughs> Okay, oh, what's right? Your opinion, no? Dr. She. I will listen to Dr. Yeah. She. Yeah, yeah. Should I put a comma here? Uh, I think no. Why? These are only two uh, places they want to join. Because the, in the first sentence here, we're supposed to join another verb to ran. What did he do? He ran down the alley. Jump. And the same yes. verb should be repeated here and ran onto my loan this morning. So these are not different verbs. That's why we don't need to put a comma here. Understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, number three. Okay. So she, she stepped? She stepped around the grass across the sidewalk and onto the curb. The curb. Curb. Yes. She stepped uh, around the grass the sidewalk. Uh, what are we joining here? Uh, before and we should put. Okay, tell so me guys, what, what words are we joining or what phrases are we joining? Uh, she stepped around the grass, comma, uh, across the sidewalk, comma, two commas here, short put. Mm, she stepped around the glass, comma, across the sidewalk, Comma and, comma and onto, onto the, the curb. curb. The curb. Yeah. Around the, the grass, comma, across the sidewalk, comma, and onto the curb. Excellent. Yes, you're correct. You're right. Number four, neither. Dr. Shah, uh, ni uh, okay. Neither rain, sleet, nor hail shall keep away the U.S. mail. Neither uh, rain, sleet, nor... Neither rain, sleet, yeah. nor hail uh, shall keep sure. away the U.S. Uh, mail. No need, I think. Hmm? Or I'm a weak in... You are? I can't hear uh, you. I think no need for comma. No need for the comma. Okay, I'm going to listen to you. Why? Is there a uh, reason? It negates the first. Uh, because how many items? How many items are we joining together? 
First is neither rain sleet. Yes. Uh, how many sentences are we joining in this sentence? Uh, two. So are they more than two? There are only two. Then at that time, look at the beginning of the lesson. The what did we say? Here. Here, a list of three or more items. Yeah, the last two of which yeah. are in by a comma. So we don't need to add this comma, all right? Okay, anyway, again, Yani, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to focus or concentrate with you, uh, but your answers were totally correct. Number two, the comma with coordinate adjectives. Use commas between coordinate adjectives. And what do I mean by coordinate adjectives? What do I mean by coordinate adjectives? Read, yeah, uh, Ruji, please. Uh, coordinate adjectives are adjectives placed next to each other that are equal in importance to test to determine whether adjectives are coordinate or the following. See whether and can be smoothly placed between them. See whether the adjective order can be reversed. The, uh, reverse it. Um, uh, continue or stop? Yes, continue please. Look at the example. Look at this example. We saw a happy, lively poodle. Lively. Uh, sorry? Lively. Uh, we saw a happy, lively poodle. In this example, a comma belongs between happy and lively because they are coordinate adjective. Test to make certain. First, try the end test. Uh, it's okay. Continue. Continue, please. Um, and to place between the two adjectives sounds smooth. Second, try reversing the adjectives. We saw a lively, happy poodle. We saw a lively, happy poodle. When the adjectives yes. are reversed, the sentence still makes sense. So instead of saying happy and lively, you can say a lively and happy poodle or a lively comma happy poodle. Thus, happy and lively are coordinate adjectives in the example and should be separated by a comma. See, now the point is that in this example, a comma belongs for happy and lively because they are coordinate adjectives. Adjective. What did you understand, yeah, Dr. Shea, from coordinate adjectives? Yeah, there's a question I want to ask you. <laughs> okay. But I, I couldn't get her uh, properly from... Uh, All right. Here we have the coordinate uh, adjectives. Okay. These are adjectives to describing words that are equal in importance. Two tests to determine whether yeah. adjectives are coordinate in the following or not. For example, if I say that this that, that, that the IELTS test was easy um, and went easy and smooth. Again, the IELTS test went easy and smooth. It, do these two adjectives have equal importance or one of them is more important than the other? Equal importance? They can, yeah, they are of equal importance. They can alternate each other. They can replace each other. I can start with either easy or not challenging or either easy or smooth, right? Okay. So both of them can alternate each other. Both of them are good alternatives to each other. I cannot put easy first and then smooth or vice versa. I can choose whatever to start with. These are called coordinate adjectives. They can replace each other with no change in the meaning. All right? So we saw a happy, okay. lively poodle. In this example, that's fine to put a comma here. Again, we saw a happy and lively poodle. That's fine if you try the and test and place between the two adjectives like we saw a lively, happy poodle. All right? All right. When the adjectives are reversed, the sentence still makes sense. So you can say we saw happy, comma, lively poodle. So you can add either and or a comma. Okay? And you can switch between... Both of them are right? Pardon me? Yes, both of them are correct. Okay. Caution. Be careful. Caution means be careful. Not all adjective, not all adjectives, um, not all adjective pairs are coordinate adjectives. Not all pair adjectives or adjective pairs are coordinate adjectives. Thus, 
Thus means for this reason, not all adjectives should be separated from one another by a comma. How's that? Look at this example. We saw a young golden retriever. Do you guys know what's a retriever? A retriever is, huh? No, it's some kind of a dog. Yes? Some type of a dog. Okay. Okay, so we saw a young golden retriever. Young golden, here are two adjectives. Are these two uh, replace, replaceable adjectives? Are they coordinate adjectives? Try to switch. Can I say, we saw a golden young retriever? Now listen, in this example, no comma belongs between the two adjectives, young and golden. Why? Because they are not coordinate adjectives. How can we know? This is the difficult question that Dr. Yes. Shea and Roshi want to ask, right? How yes, can you know if coordinate adjectives or not? First, try the and test. We saw a young and golden retriever. Yes? Does it fit smoothly here? A young and golden no. retriever? No, we're describing the same thing, right? Which is the retriever, why putting and? Second, try reversing the adjective. We saw a golden young retriever. Does it make sense? A golden young retriever? When no. the two adjectives are reversed, they do not make sense. Make sense. Golden young? Golden here means it's made of gold. Yeah? Golden in color. Yes, golden in color. It's supposed to be golden in color. So you better start with your own point of view, which is young first, and then you give whatever descriptions you would like to say, which is you have to start with young and then golden. Thus, young and golden are not coordinate adjectives and should be separated by a comma. So again, you have to ask yourself whether they are coordinate adjectives or not. If they are replaceable, they can alternate each other. One of them can come first and the other can come second. That's fine, not to add a comma. But if, sorry, that's fine to add a comma. But if both of them are not uh, uh, coordinate adjectives, then please do not add a comma. So young and children here are not coordinate adjectives and should not be separated by a comma. We saw a young golden retriever. Okay, yalla questions, one, two, three. Read the directions, Rushi, please. Rewrite the blue sentence on the given the line below. using commas. As it's not the blue, it's the below. Rewrite the below. Sentence. Rewrite. Rewrite the below sentence on the given line, placing commas as needs between all the coordinate adjectives. If the adjective in the sentence are not coordinate, apply pistis, then don't do not add commas, but write correct in the text box. In the text okay. box. Repeat. Yes. In the text box. And the in the text box. Text box. In the text box. Okay. So here you have to write correct in the text box. And what are the two tests that they mean? Which two tests do they mean? Apply the two tests. Yes. We write the below sentences of the giving line, placing commas as needed between the coordinate adjectives. If the adjectives in the sentence are not coordinate, if you, know, if you want to know whether they coordinate or not, you have to apply tests. What are the tests that we need to apply? Reverse them huh? and see what? the meaning is okay or not. Okay, apply the tests. We have two tests to do. Number one here. Reverse the word. Try, try the and test. Try to put and between them. Number two, ah. switching between them, all right? In order to know whether they are coordinate adjectives or not. Okay, number one, Russia again. We enjoy the clean, 
crisp smell of the mountain air. We enjoy the clean, crisp smell. Um, we, will put come up we will put come up between clean and crisp. We enjoy the clean, crisp smell of the mountain air. Clean. Air. Can I say the clean and crisp? The clean mm. and crisp. Yes. Clean and crisp smell. So can yeah, I say the clean, crisp, clean smell of the mountain air? Clean, Does yes. Does make sense? Does it sound nice? We enjoy the clean and crisp smell. We enjoy it. The crisp, clean. No. Doesn't. So we don't need to add a comma here. Okay. Number two. Yeah. Beth. Okay, okay, I got it now. Yeah. Okay, great. Beth? Beth? Beth was a student who's uh, intelligent, conscientious mind earned her good grades. Yes? Beth was a student who's intelligent. What are the two adjectives? Cons uh, this intelligent oh. and Conscientious. All right. So, you think that these are coordinate adjectives or not? Mm, I think intelligent and conscientious. Uh, they are almost all, same meaning. So, it is a coordinate adjective. They are coordinate adjectives. Can you, if you replace them or if you switch them, can you say Beth was in a student who's, who's conscious, who's contentious, intelligent yes, mind. Intelligent, are intelligent and conscientious mind. I think we should put a comma between intelligent and conscientious. Why? We can put, I think. Okay, it's better if you put... Yes. It's better if you put a come here. Why? Yeah. Because, because, yeah. yes, because we can easily, we can easily uh, switch between these two words, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. We also put the thing. end in between them. Very good. Thank you very much. Number three, Dr. Bean gave us Dr. Bean. Final exam. Hard to find. No need to both take comma. No need to put a comma. Thank you very much, Dr. Krusha. She ate. She ate the sweet, juicy apple with the vengeance. Vengeance. Yes, vengeance. Juicy apple. Uh, sweet and juicy. I think no need. No need. Why? Because they are, are not coordinate adjectives. Their meanings are not same. Thank you very much. Do you guys know what's called what, vengeance? No, uh, that's why I couldn't pronounce it. Okay. Properly. Okay. Um, uh, Rushi, any idea? Ch because we do see. Okay, when you do something with vengeance, this means that you're doing it with great force. So when you eat something with vengeance or with a vengeance, this means that you were too hungry. So you're eating it like, uh, like you were too hungry, you know? You're yes, eating yes. it with force. Uh, you're eating as if you were in, 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 uh, in starvation. <laughs> yes, I, I got the meaning. <laughs> Yeah, yes. and you start eating yes. something, you're, you eat it with a vengeance, all right? Okay, now yes. let's move to rule number three, the comma in compound sentences, and this one is really important, okay? Remember who lives in the compound, ladies and gentlemen? Who lives in the compound? Remind me, please. The? Yeah, no. exactly, exactly as if I said nothing about the compound sentences. Remember, when we were talking about the compound sentences, who lives there? Hello? Yes? Who lives Hello? in compound? 
Who lives in a compound? Yes, who lives in a compound? No one. I don't remember. No one? <laughs> no one. <Yes. laughs> I, 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 to you, I told you before that in order to remind yourself of how to make a compound sentence, remind yourself with fanboys. Fan you mean uh, fanboys, uh, the for and uh, um, but? You Very good. For, yes, fanboys, for and nor but or yet. And but, yes, are uh, fanboys, words. yes. Excellent. Yes. Compound sentence. So to make a compound sentence, we, we need to use all these words. But again, don't forget to add a comma before these fanboys. Okay? Yes. Okay, okay. so a compound sentence is a sentence that has two independent clauses. Yani two sentences that give us full meaning each sentence gives us a full and a complete idea all right let's see here the two independent clauses in a compound sentence can be joined by either a semicolon okay and you don't have to bother yourself very much with the semicolon it's barely used nowadays all right or v which is a comma okay and you better please yes. better to pay attention to this before any of the fanboys, if the fanboys are joining two complete sentences or independent clauses, you have to put a comma here. Joe read the book, but his friend saw the movie. These are two contradicting ideas, yet both of them make a complete idea. His friend saw the movie, it's an independent clause, and Joe read the book, independent clause, and they are joined by one of the fan boys, which, is, which must be preceded by a comma. Otherwise, your punctuation will be badly affected while writing. All right? All right. Okay. Okay. Here, look at this example. Joe read the book and saw the movie. Can you guys tell me why we did that? Again, Joe read the book and saw the movie. Are, these, are, are both sentences independent clauses? No. no. Why? Because one, he, one, one thing about Joe only. Read yes. the book. And yes. the movie. Thank you very much. It's only, oh, these are one two subject. verbs. Yes, one subject, yet two verbs, but they are not two independent clauses, right? So, yes. and here yes. does not join two independent clauses. One, one independent and one dependent. Or, but it's not a dependent, it's, you can say it's a phrase, all right? So, in the above example, two verb groups are being joined by and. The second verb group does not have a subject. There's no subject here. Thus, it's not an independent clause. Therefore, no comma belongs before and. Right. This example is a simple sentence with a compound verb, not a compound sentence. However, we can make this sentence into a compound sentence if we simply add another subject, like saying, Joe read the book and he saw the movie. Then it turned into two independent clauses, okay? All right? Okay. Okay. Now we have a bona fide compound sentence. Bona fide, like two sentences that make complete ideas. The two independent clauses are separated by a comma and the word and. Here are some examples which illustrate the difference between compound elements in the sentence, no commas, and the true compound sentences with commas. Okay? Read, ya, dukhusha. Simple sentence. Uh, Marion read the paper, but read, read. Didn't, read the paper, but didn't agree with its thesis. One of them is an independent clause. Marion read the paper. Yeah. One of the, and the other is not an independent. Not, clause. not independent. There is no subject. That's why I don't have to put a comma, right? Yeah. yeah. For okay. a yeah. sentence, we can easily do something. Marion, but you add another subject to the sentence to make it an independent clause or two independent clauses joined by but. Then we have to add a comma. Understand? We yes. have a simple sentence. The army and the marines were summoned. Summoned means gathered. Yes. The army and the marines. Do we have to add a comma here? 
Oh, the army yeah. and the marines? Uh, marines. No, not really. Why? Because these are two noun subjects which are joined by and. If they are two noun subjects, you don't have my friend and I. You don't have to add comma at all. Okay? Yeah. So for simple yeah. sentences or simple subjects, you don't have to add a comma. For compound sentences here, the army was summoned and the marines were put on alert. These are two independent clauses joined by and which is preceded by the comma. Okay? Simple sentence again. Yeah, Roshi, read. Joel changed his classes or his work hours. Are these two independent clauses? Joel changed his class or his work hours? No. No, one of them is an independent, independent clause and the other is not. Yes, right? one subject here. So, yes. do we have to add a comma before or? No. It's uh, okay. Yes. In, uh, order to change it, in order to change it into a compound sentence, tell me how. Can you give a shot? Think about... Uh, Joel changed his classes. Yes. And uh, he uh, uh, oh, and oh, he worked. Or uh, sorry, or he uh, or he uh, worked um, hours. So when he or he what? I will add uh, the pronoun here. All right. Or he. Or yes. Or he. Yes. Wa or he worked. Hours. He worked hours. What do you mean by he worked hours? He worked for hours. He worked for hours. He changed work. Joe changed his classes, or he, he or he worked for uh, hours. Oh, or he were or he changed he his for work. more hours. Yes, or he worked for more hours. He changed his work yes. hours. Yes. Okay. So. Yes. Make it a full sentence. Here we go. Yeah. So Joe changed his class or he adjusted his work schedule. Either to change the class or to adjust his work schedule. Understand? Okay. All right. Yes. So now we need to know the seven joining words for and nor, but, or, yet, and so, fanboys. Fanboys. You know, we have to know that we can distinguish between simple sentences without a comma or with or without a comma. Um, unfortunately, this exercise must be done written. One to five. Or you prefer to do it now? Yes. Now. Orally. One by one. Okay, okay. Good. Yes. Okay, Dr. Shah, please start. You must go uh, immediately or you will not get a place in the class. You tell me whether it is a comma or not and why. Uh, it has, uh, yeah, we will put the comma. Why? Because uh, two subjects are there. So we and, need, uh, need two independent clauses. You must go immediately. Okay, you mean that these are two independent clauses? Two independent clauses, right? Yeah, two independent. Thank you very much. Number two, Ushi. I am copying this receipt for. I want to make this dish someday. Uh, we will put a come up before four as we uh, have independent clause I and I to uh, pronounce here. Thank you very much. So I'm copying this recipe, comma, for I want to make this dish someday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Horror fed the cats and walked the dogs. So uh, yes, it, doesn't need, it doesn't need a comma. Doesn't need a comma. Why? Because uh, uh, lack of subject. The other, the second one is uh, not uh, the. It is uh, not uh, independent. Uh, Thank you very much. Because of the lack of the subject in the second sentence, yeah. no subject. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, he will be elected tomorrow, and he will be God leader. Uh, we will put a comma before and as um, there is two pronouns here. Uh, yeah. There is independent clause. Yes. Yes. Thank we you. We will very put comma. Welcome, welcome. Thanks a lot. Next, Dr. Shea, please. 
this class is exciting but it is hard comma or no comma uh, i think comma is there thank you very much why don't think be sure well, you ask uh, the second one is also a complete uh, uh, like uh, independent uh, phrase and a class is changed by it so it has subject thank you very much excellent thank you very much so i think you guys understand when and where to put the comma now rule number 4 yes. the comma with the introductory words you still remember what are the introductory words yes when why how are you ha dr sha yes you're saying it right yeah when why where how it's written already madam on the <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is not what I want you to do actually. <laughs> what I want you to do is to try to recall what I told you, how to start your oral presentation. You say, well, as a matter of fact, certainly, definitely, in my own point of view, as far as I remember. These are all introductory words and phrases, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Place a comma after introductory phrases that tell where, when, why and how. Again, where when why and how especially uh, specifically use a comma how's that after a long introductory phrase like when when did you do that during the hot summer 1984 the temperature set records so when did this happen during the hot summer in 1984 this is a long prepositional phrase after a long prepositional phrase that is supposed to be an introductory phrase put a comma Usually, it's not necessary to use a comma after short introductory prepositional phrase. Prepositional phrase. What I mean by prepositional phrase is a preposition plus a noun. Here, preposition like during, hot summer is the noun. This is a prepositional phrase. So short introductory prepositional phrase like during 1984, you can either put a comma or you don't. During 1984, you can put a comma here or you cannot. It's like uh, optional. Not mandatory. Yes, it's optional. It's not mandatory. All right. Number two. Okay. After an introductory phrase made up of two plus a verb and any modifiers, which is infinitive, that tells why. To get my records, I had to send a check for three hundred dollars or three dollars. Okay. Why did you send the check? It's to get my records. To plus verb phrase. To get. Infinitive of the verb. After this sentence that answers the question or phrase that answers the question why, kindly make sure to use a comma. And I want you please to memorize these four words. Where, when, why, and how. Try to memorize it now in a minute. Yeah, that is me that we have to ask ourselves before answering? Yeah, that's it. Yes, you have to ask yourself, do this question or does this phrase answer the questions where, uh, answer any of the questions where, when, why, and how or not? If they answer any of these questions, then you have to add a comma. If not, then you don't have to. Here we have the same. To okay. win, you must practice hard. Why? It's to win. You can tell... You have the kind of introductory two plus verb phrase when you can put the words in order. How? In order to win, comma, you must practice hard. Or in order to win is my uh, in order to win is my goal. Or to win is my goal. Okay? Here we don't need to put a comma at all. Be careful, not all intro introductory two phrases tell why. Not all the introductory uh, uh, phrases that start with to can tell us why. To win is my goal. There is no why here. There is no reason for what you're doing. That's why you don't have to add a comma here. Okay? After an introductory close that answers when, where, why, how, and to what degree. As that, a close is a group of words, like for example, tells when, after you complete the film, comma, you will edit it. Tells where, where you live, comma, I will follow. All right? Tells why if the rain is on time, comma, we'll need you. Tells why although the rain is late, comma, we'll still need you. Tells how 
as if we were still friends, comma, hold my hand. All right? This is how. Yes. How you would like me to hold your hand. As if we were still friends. Note, when such clause comes at the end of the sentence, do not use a comma. How's that? Hold my hands as if we were still friends. So here we have a clause that tells how. It is still the clause that tells how, but it doesn't come in the beginning of the sentence. Understand? Okay, so if you start with a sentence that tells why, how, where, and so on, add a comma. If it comes at the end of the sentence, you don't have to. He forgot his line because he was tired. Okay, here we have some exercises. One to four, please. No, forget about one to four. Let's move to six to ten. Six to ten, Dr. Shah, please start. Six to ten? Mm -hmm. Unless fiscal policies are changed, the country will face a depression. Mm. You have to add comma. Okay. Yeah. Unless fiscal policies are changed, the country will face a depression. After change, we will put comma. Thank you. Which question does it answer? Uh, where, uh, why, when? When, when, very good. When will the country face a depression? Unless a, fa a fiscal, uh, unless fiscal diplom uh, policies are changed. Thank you very much. Question two. And by the way, Dr. Claire, you can notice yourself while reading the example. You will find an automatic pose while reading. This pose means a comma. Okay? That's yeah. why I'm telling you that commas, the commas lesson is really important because it affects your way of pronouncing and of uh, uh, saying or giving whatever speech you want to say. A comma means okay. a pose while speaking. And this is counted also while you're doing your speech or your presentation. Okay? Okay, number eight, number seven, Rushi, please. To get to my house, make a right hand turn. To get to my house, make a right hand turn. To get to my house, make a right hand turn. Do I have to add a comma here? Did I, I stop? No. Listen to me. Did I stop? While reading, I I told that I, I think that I have to put before make. It's okay. Uh, the kitchen how? But why? Why? No, not why. Mm -hmm. No, this is the reason. But but I think no need to put comma here. There is a need to put a comma after house to get to my house. Comma make a right hand turn. Why? Because yes, before make. my house, yes, before make. Why? Because it answers the question, why should I make a right-hand turn? It's to get to my house. Right? Yes, why? Okay. okay. Right, yes. And again, you can ask yourself a different uh, question, by the way. You can ask yourself, can I say the sentence in one breath? Like, to get to my house, make a right-hand turn. To get to my house, make a right-hand turn. Or I have to pose after house. I think better pose after house. It's better pose, yes, definitely. Okay, number eight. Rushi again, please. Okay, before the war and most in that in that country. Bloodshed, bloodshed. 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 What is the meaning of bloodshed? Okay, Dr. Shah, tell her the meaning of bloodshed. Killing, killing to shed the blood. Uh, 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 killing the people when the people is killed or injured, the blood will flow down on the, uh, Very good. shed on the ground. Yes, the blood will flow down or shed. So the blood shed means flowing blood because of the massacres that happen in wars and so on. Okay, before the war and bloodshed in that country, the people were happy. Uh, we will put comma before the people. Before the people. Okay. Uh, the question when, when does it answer? When? Roughly. When? 
Excellent. Yes, yes. Good. Good job. Number nine, Dr. Shah. We, uh, sorry, where she put the comma? Uh, the people, before the war and bloodshed in that country, after country. After country. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it would make sense. Okay. Number nine, please. When Harry finished the book, she gave it to Harry. Uh, after book, we will put Thank the comma. Answers the question. When? Yeah, when when uh, Harry finished the book. Yes, thank you. Number 10. Harriet Harry gave the book to Henny when she finished it. Uh, before uh, Harry gave the book to Harry. Before when? Not really. Uh, Harry after book. Harry? Notice that it is the same no need. example no as need. no need. Excellent. No need. Yeah. Why? Yes. Because we said that. Okay, no need because is there a reason? No need. I get the box to when she finished. What's the reason? Because uh, the no question. Uh, asking. It was in the last phrase. Thank you. Because yes, yes because, because it came last. If it comes first. You have to follow it with the comma. If yeah. not, yes. then there's no need. Right? Rule number five, the comma with a non-essential words, phrases, and clauses. How's that? Separate with comma and non-essential, any non-essential words or groups of words from the rest of the sentence. These are called interrupters. These are interrupters. So separate interrupter words like however, nevertheless, Yes, no, of course, from the rest of the sentence. By the way, if you just separate these words, you will find out that the meaning is not changed. The man forgot, however, where he had placed his keys. Now try to erase this, however. The man forgot where he had placed his keys. Is there any difference in the meaning? No difference. That's why it's a non-essential word. Yet, it gives a better or a more like a native speaker language. Okay, so is it important to be used? Yes, it's kind of important, but it's not that important. It's not that essential. Yes, so non-essential words here, these non-essential words must be set using one comma before and one comma after. And how would I know that this is a non-essential word or phrase? If you just cross it out and you read the whole sentence, then you will find out that the meaning is not changed. Number two, however, look, here we put a comma. However, however, we can cross this word too. The man forgot where he placed his key, and that's it. It's a non-essential word, yet if you start it, or if you start your sentence using it, you have to add a comma after it, okay? Here, separate the renamer. How's a renamer? We call it, grammatically, we call it an appositive phrase, a positive phrase from the, less, the rest of the sentence or with a comma. How's that? When you say, for example, Mrs. Hind, comma, the IELTS trainer, comma, teaches the English language too. I can drop out or I can cross the words or the phrase, our English tea or uh, the, the IELTS trainer, right? I can say, Mrs. Hind teaches English too. Correct? It's the same as this example. Mr. Jones, comma, the foreman at the plant, comma, is on vacation. The foreman at the plant. Here, here is an a positive phrase. And why do we call it a positive phrase? Because it adds more information to the subject of the sentence. Who is Mr. Jones? Who is Mr. Jones? So if you're expecting the person you are addressing or you're speaking to, to ask you, who is Mr. Jones? It's better if you give an a positive or a man. Yeah? The foreman. Foreman. Yes, the foreman at the plant. Yeah. Okay. So here, this is an a positive sentence. Here is the comma before and another comma after the a positive phrase. It renames Mr. Jones or it gives further information about Mr. Jones. Separate adjective phrases with the essential parts of the sentence. How's that? Mary Roberts, comma, 
calling out Joe's name. Mama ran down the street. It's an adjective phrase. Why is it an adjective phrase? Because it describes Mary Roberts. It is, what was she doing? She was calling out Joe's name. Mm -hmm. She ran down. So this sentence must be separated too. Okay? Okay. Here we have. Same here. Amazed at the noise, which is an adjective phrase. It started with an adjective and it describes Mary. <clears throat> Again, it's a sentence which is called an adjective phrase. Why is it an adjective phrase? Because it describes a noun, who is Mary Roberts. What was Mary Roberts doing or what was her status? She was amazed at the noise. Okay, so these adjective phrases must be doing, must be followed by a comma. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, separate. Do you understand what I'm saying, or I'm just this explaining to myself? Is it too difficult to understand? Uh, yeah, little bit too difficult, more the other. Mm. It's a little bit more difficult. I, know I, I, I just got to, I just got to the adjective the phrase. This one, the adjectival phrase, adjectival phrase, adjective. Yes, this yes. Is I, I, I got, I got this part. All right. Or the appositives, appositives like this one here. Uh, yes. A positive. Oh, like, we have an appositive. Like, like. This is renamer, as you said. Yes. This is a renamer or a positive. A positive. Okay, the whole thing is an is, is an appositive phrase, the foreman at the plant. Okay? This is an appositive phrase because it adds more information to who Mr. Jones is. Okay. okay. Do you understand it now? Okay. Okay. So in number four, separate non-essential ad adjective closes from the rest of the sentence. We have to separate them. Let's see. The man who robbed the bank was caught today. This is an adjective clause. Who was this man? Who robbed the bank? The man who robbed the bank. The essential adjective clause should not be separated from the sentence with a comma. The non-essential adjective clause, like other non-essential elements, should be separated with commas. First of all, see, I know that it's a little bit confusing whether to determine this is a very, uh, uh, this is an essential adjective clause or not, okay? First, you have to ask yourself. Is does it, it essential? More information? Yes, if I drop it, does it affect the meaning or not? The meaning will change. Yeah, the meaning will change or not. So the man who robbed the bank was called today. It's an adjective close. And it's not set off using a comma. Why? Because it's an essential adjective. Thank you. It is yes, essential. Yes. It's very important. Yes. It's here, Sam Spider, who robbed the bank, was called today. Here is an adjective close, which is not very important to the meaning. Okay? Because and him... Yes? No, no. Because his name already mentioned? Uh, yes, because his name is already mentioned. Excellent. Okay? And it is an, a positive, it, sorry, and it is an adjective clause. It adds more information to Sam Spider. Allow me to pick up the phone because it's really important. Just two minutes okay. and I'll come back. All right? No you problem. can go through okay. the next page, please. So now can you please explain to me what did you understand from this uh, page? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Can you please explain to me or teach us 
What did you understand from this uh, from this page? Have you gone through it? I'm just uh, reading. All right. Uh, the, uh, it told us that uh, if the uh, adjective clause is essential. Yes. Whether so, essential or not. Adjective, do not use a comma. Very good. Comma. If it is not essential, then you can use commas. We have to Very report good. commas. Very good. Non-essential, set it off using two commas. One before and one off. Yes. Thanks a lot. That's it. Okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now let's do one, two, five, please. One by one. We write the below sentence on the given line, placing commas as needed. If no comma is needed, write correct in the text below, uh, in the text box below the sentence. There's no text box. Mm -hmm. Number one. Yalla <laughs> Rushi, number one. Recognizing the thief, the policeman arrested them immediately. Uh, before, um, this um, no, no need to put comma here. No way. Why did you pause while reading then? Read it again. And notice where did you pause? Recognize the thief. Uh, the policeman arrested him immediately. Why did you stop after the thief? Uh, yes, because I'm thinking the to put comma before uh, after thief or no need to put comma. There is <laughs> That's a why. Put the comma. Recognizing yes. thief, the policeman arrested him immediately. Yes. Yes. Because this is an adjectival phrase. It describes the policeman. The police so we will describes the policeman. So after the thief, put a comma, please. Number two, Dr. Shah. The student who writes the best paper will receive the best grade. Yes. Student who writes the best paper. Uh, will receive. So, where should I put the comma here? Uh, after a paper? Incorrect. Think, or no need. think again. Yes? No, no need. need. Why? Because the student who, re, uh, who writes the oh, best wow. paper will receive, this is the one sentence. It's a one sentence and the phrase which is who writes the best paper is one very essential adjectival clause or phrase. Yeah. Yes? Oh, yes. So, Sorry, it's adjective or adjective? Is it it's an adjective? adjective. We call it adjective phrase or adjectival phrase. Adjectival phrase. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Number three, Rushi. Alias uh, Moxley, um, Moxley, a famous serial lawyer. Trial. Well, trial. Lawyer will trial. Lawyer will uh, represent Mrs. Kishman. Well, represent, represent. Well, represent. Yes, Mrs. Kishman. Miss Kishman. Miss Kishman. Alias Moxley, a famous serial well. Um, we will put the, no need to put comma. Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I compute in this rule. I have to study this idea. <laughs> yes, it's need more concentration. <laughs> yeah, concentrate. Yes. Try to concentrate more. Um, alias market. This is end. The so I we will put we will put comma before uh, web. Mm, okay, only one comma. Uh, and before uh, um, after Max uh, Moxley. Very good. Thank you very much. Why did you set this sentence off using two commas? A famous trial lawyer. Famous trial lawyer because this um, is defining the person uh, because he mentioned uh, the person here the the, the no. name no adject adject un ish un ish un I didn't get it. 
It's unessential. Okay. You mean that this unessential, is an yes. adjective phrase. Uh, but actually, yes. it's not an adjective phrase. It's an appositive. It adds more information to Elias Moxley. Because it's... So I answer by... Uh, I answer by chance or by reference, okay? Don't, don't answer by chance. You have to understand what you're saying. So, uh, I, uh, I you just remember. Out, listen, Rushi, please. If you cross out a famous trial lawyer and you read the whole sentence, Ilyas Moxley will represent Mr. Schmidt. It will give you the same meaning. But if you want to add, and if you're scared that the person you're addressing may ask you, who is Mr. Ilyas? Yes? Mm -hmm then you will have to add this a positive phrase which is a famous trial lawyer okay, okay. okay. Add this kind of a sentence that adds more information to the subject of the sentence you have to set it off using two commas my dear all right dr Shah, number four mary realizing her bad situation tried to convince her uh, boss to give her a raise a raise the sound is race, not race. Race, yes. Race. Mary realizing her uh, bad situation. Would you please read it again and listen to yourself putting while putting poses? Read it again. Mary realizing her bad situation tried to con uh, convince her boss to give her a raise, huh? A raise. Where did you stop? I think uh, I could not understand to put the comma. Uh, maybe no okay. need. Let me ask you another question. Which sentence can be crossed out without changing the meaning? Um, maybe oh, which phrase, sorry. Um, uh, realizing the hair, but thank you very much. Yes, if I said Mary, look, cross out this sentence, realizing her bad situation, and try Mary to try to convince her boss to give her a raise. Thank you very much. Excellent. So, this sentence is an extra sentence that should be separated yes. by two commas. Okay, so Mary, comma, realizing her bad situation, comma, try to convince okay. her boss to give her a raise. All right? Okay. All right. Mr. Shad, did you understand what I said? Yeah. Kind of, by sense, right? Yeah. Mary, but I'm quite sure. Mary. Yeah, I'm quite sure if you understand the lesson and you will read it once more, I'm completely sure that you will get to understand it more and more. All right? All okay. right. So uh, this is when it comes to the writing. No, no, no. It's grammar. Allow me, please. Give me a minute. This worksheet is an adorable one. Um, all right. Thomas back. Okay, I will send you this worksheet, inshallah, right after my uh, session okay. so that you can answer the rest of the worksheet. But before I do that, I need to stop the share and have one speaking test before we go. I can't just let you go like this. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm vicious enough not to leave you like without practicing any of the speaking. So... Um, Okay, Cambridge 12 again. Okay, here we go, one speaking test. This is the last, by the way, this is the last speaking test in uh, Cambridge 12 we have we had them all this is the last one that we're going to take in Cambridge 12 alhamdulillah all right anyway let me share my screen with you again here part one and part two will be your home assignment okay 
Um, I want both of you to ask each other each question. So Dr. Shea will ask Rushi, then Rushi will ask Dr. Shea and vice versa. Okay, question one, Dr. Shea, please go ahead. Dr. Shea, please go ahead. Did you enjoy, yeah, did you enjoy doing art lessons when you were a child? Rushi, would you? Uh, well, yes. Uh, well, I enjoyed uh, doing art lesson when I was a child. Um, I used to uh, uh, paint. I used to draw all uh, the time. It was uh, it was a hobby uh, to me uh, for me. Um, and uh, my parents at that time were, were uh, supportive to me all the time. Uh, I mean, they encouraged me uh, get for me. Uh, all the supplies uh, that I need to uh, draw well, um, uh, uh, paint well. Uh, uh, I would remember one day I want to uh, get to the faculty of art, um, but uh, I was unlucky to uh, reach it because my mom wanted to be in education, uh, faculty of education. Thank um, you. Just a minute, please. Dr. Shea, are you taking notes? No, no. Would you please? And the same no, no, Okay, hey guys, try to take notes, please. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Rushi, ask Dr. Shea the second question, my dear. Uh, do you ever draw or paint pictures now? Why, why not? Yeah, it's a little bit difficult question um, because to be honest, I don't have uh, any interest uh, in painting. Uh, pictures, uh, though I like to uh, see the paintings, uh, I like to visit uh, different uh, art uh, galleries. Uh, it's also uh, due to my busy schedule, I cannot uh, have a habit like this, uh, like painting pictures and drawing uh, certain uh, sceneries or uh, pictures. Uh, if I would uh, have a time, I would do. But uh, due to my busy schedule, I am unable uh, to do uh, these painting. Uh, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Rushi, did you take any notes? No comments for him, mashallah. No comments. <laughs> My point is that, again, Dr. Shah, uh, please try to recall my tips, among uh, which I told you that you have to use your own terminology. Main idea, three supporting idea and example. Thank you very much. Your terminology is required. Short time, madam, to arrange all these things. Yes, I know it takes a lot of time, but again, you have to um, uh, arrange your ideas in this order. And you have to get yourself very much used to doing this even in your daily life. That would definitely help you, by the way. Would definitely help you in persuading and convincing the others. This is the best way to deal with any difficult situation. And, to, and it is the shortest way to convince or persuade someone with a, with a certain point of view, believe me. Just get yourself very well trained to this exercise. It helps a lot. Okay. All right. Three, Dr. Shah. When, when was the last time you went to an art gallery or exhibition? Uh, yeah. And why? Well, there are two points uh, here. Don't yeah. forget, two parts of the question. Yeah. Um, uh, well, honestly, I didn't go any uh, art gallery for a couple of months. Uh, due to my work, uh, I don't have much time to visit any art gallery. Uh, but uh, the last visit to me was uh, last year. Uh, we did uh, um, art gallery or art fair in our school. Uh, it is uh, for uh, the art teacher. Um, this is the last time I visited uh, art gallery. I continue. What, Dr. Shea, your comments, please. Uh, I think the last part. Uh, why is remaining? Uh, she didn't answer the why. No, I said due to my work because I don't have much oh, time yes. okay. to visit. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, go is usually followed by two. Okay, uh, what kind of picture, what kind of, uh, it's really, what kind of picture do you like having in your home? Why? Uh, it's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> uh, it's almost uh, a, a, about uh, 20 to 30 uh, pictures I have on my walls, uh, all in, uh, in almost all rooms. Uh, these uh, uh, mainly these uh, are the pictures of mosques. Uh, especially the historical mosque in a uh, subcontinent and uh, also some uh, mosques that were built in Muslim uh, era while they, there was a Khilafat Usmania in uh, um, uh, Turkey. So uh, these pictures I love to put on my wall and uh, uh, I have a great interest in uh, Islamic history. That's why I uh, like these pictures. Uh, to uh, I like to see these pictures and to have these pictures in my home. Um, uh, it's my it's like my hobby. I collect these pictures from so many different countries and uh, put in, uh, fix on my walls uh, different walls of the house. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah. Any comments, Rushi? Uh, can you let the comments for you, Ms. Tan? I can't uh, hear you. Say, really, it uh, <laughs> Say it again. Can you let the comments for you? Can you oh. let the comments for you <laughs> to you? You are the one who put the comments for us. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> because mashallah is um, outstanding. It's outstanding. <laughs> so I cannot uh, count. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I agree with you, but again, we still have some defects that need to be... Uh, I know, my dear. Yes, no one is complete. You will definitely find anything wrong, yes? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so again, the point, Dr. Shea, again, is um, I liked your way of arranging your ideas this time, by the way. When you said that I have many... This time I tried. Yes, <laughs> this time we did it right. But again, you forgot the part of um, using your own terminology. Um, however, it was not very much required. I liked very much starting with uh, one of the introductory phrases. I like that very much. Uh, also, uh, starting your second and third sentence with any of the subordinate conjunctions. I don't know whether you do this deliberately or you just do naturally. it naturally. naturally. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I want Russia to do the same naturally. Please, Russia, you will help me a lot if you do the same. All right. Okay. So thank you very much for today's session. I'm so proud of you guys. And, and I can notice the improvement in your, uh, in your skills, in your speaking skills. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, you're making me really happy every time. Um, I want you guys to give me a special, a very special presentation uh, in your home assignment that I will send you just right after the session, okay? Um, okay. And I all, and, uh, I'm, also, I'm uh, only okay. Madam sent the today's lecture. Pardon me? Yes. Uh, the, today's yes lecture. the lecture for the today. You want today's lecture? Yes. yes. Oh, how much will you pay for this? I cannot give it. <laughs> I cannot give it for free. <laughs> okay. I will. I will. No problem. Okay, thank you. you. No problem. I enjoyed the course today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. bye, -bye.